I took Celeste and turned every floor into lava because I wanted to find out how possible and difficult it would be. But first of course, let's go over the basic rules of this challenge. What I defined as a floor to turn into lava is basically anything that I would call the ground. This can be grass, dirt, snow, stone, whatever. And what I do not think is part of the floor or part of the ground are steel bars floating islands and other constructions like these wood platforms. That is literally it. So let's go play this game now. In chapter 1 we are quickly going to realize the main issues that lava brings for us and the skills that we will have to use in order to solve these problems. Most rooms are not too difficult yet. There's a lot of platforms, steel bars and springs that aren't part of the floor so they do not turn into lava. But the first thing that I rapidly discovered is that the walls are our best friends. Hanging onto them and using them as a way to jump over the lava is going to be incredibly common throughout this entire challenge. Also, a good friend, the wave dash, and other fancy jumps like the extended reverse hyper, will help us cover a lot of distance when big parts of the levels are just floor that we have to cross. However, they will not solve all of our problems. Here was probably the most difficult room in chapter 1, and as you can see, the distance is just way too much to cover. But through a lot of experimentation with lava, I noticed that you can actually perform a corner jump in between these lava blocks. If you look at the hitboxes here, by just lining yourself up exactly in between the two lava hitboxes, the game for some reason allows you to jump off the wall that is just right below it, I think, which will be making this room and a lot of future obstacles possible, as long as the floor isn't just a completely straight line. There is also one more thing that very quickly came to my attention and as in very quickly I mean room number two. Your dash only resets when you touch the ground and when most of the ground gets turned into lava that you know kind of sucks. And that is also going to be the main challenge throughout this entire game because here in room two you will need your dash back in the end to make it through the gap yet it's completely impossible to get over these spikes without using it and there are no more clever wall bounces or jumps that we can perform here either. But honestly I never really expected this challenge to be 100% doable. You know turning every floor into lava is just asking to completely break some rooms and when that is the case I will deploy a cheating block. This is what they will look like and the goal is to just use as few as possible. So feel free to guess along how many do you think that's actually gonna take me to beat all of Celeste like this. Anyway, with this first and only cheat in this chapter, we're able to fairly quickly close this one out and have somewhat of an idea of what we are up against. Starting off chapter 2, we have to get into the mirror first, which isn't too big of a deal. Activating these blocks that we can now dash through and having to work our way back to the beginning. But here sadly, after a lot of experimentation and trying, I again couldn't cover the distance or keep my dash to progress. So a second block is being placed. Then it's time to solve some rooms while we have the battle in chasing us, which is definitely not stressful at all, no. Especially once we reach this monstrosity. I again tried a bunch of different strats, but there was only one conclusion here cheating. So I tactically chose the best spot for this block so I could wave dash all the way across and oh boy did things not really get easier. Turning the floor into lava really turned this one into a puzzle. And a puzzle that took me about half an hour to complete because I really did not want to cheat. It starts off with these jumps to catch the first switch while keeping our dash so that we can use the block in the middle to grab the top left switch. The hardest part, believe it or not, is jumping back over this lava very precise and very time consuming but once I was able to land that I just have to repeat the starts, try and then get the switch at the top, then get the switch on the right, jump over the lava here and then exiting the room. Honestly the battle in chase was such a pain in the ass, like the next room I needed to perform a pixel perfect distance wall bounce into the next room where I just had to cheat because getting to the switch without using my dash was impossible. Into the final tall room where three more cheating blocks entered the picture. And before you tell me that it was possible without cheating, I spent 40 minutes grinding this one room. I basically had to drop all the way down then perform a beautifully well timed sequence sequence of jumps, ducks and dashes to grab these switches while avoiding the Bedouins that were chasing me. A very well choreographed routine that eventually got me into the final area. An area that just happens to be all floor. And even with a million corner jumps I could not get to the end of the screen. So the final cheat of this chapter was placed, then getting to the end was pretty easy, but then there is a cutscene that teleports you back to the start and then it gets a little bit tricky but nothing too wild. Another clever mechanic here that we're using and that we will be using in the future is screen transitions.
animations. This allows us to reset our dash, keep our momentum and gain a lot of heights. So what we learned here in chapter 2 is that corner jumps are the objective in our skill tree that we need to invest in and completely max out. We also learned that trying to use a minimum amount of cheating blocks still means a lot of suffering and a lot of spent time and deaths. Heading into chapter 3, this map sadly kinda broke when changing it. For some reason, the dust bunnies that normally look like this turned into blue spikes and also into these moving spikes. I have no clue what causes it, but luckily the level still plays exactly the same. At the start, there is loads of floating platforms, so the difficulty did not increase too much. There's also this very cool parkour section where I just had to get across while saving my dash. This level also has a lot of cutscenes that only trigger when there is floor because, well, you know, lava kills me. And also the game has crashed before trying to load a cutscene that involves lava, so these are the only exceptions that I make to the challenge. But hey, we made it to the big massive room that we have to clean by activating three buttons. The first button was incredibly easy since all of the mass is still here and we can use those as platforms. The second button however was a completely different story. First room, impossible. Second room, too much floor with nothing that I can try. The third room, parkour. Fourth room, impossible. Wait, wait, this distance might seem too much, but what if I do a reverse super into a corner jump into a dash? Oh my god, I'm a genius. And then we finally get to the button, but of course, we'll need to cheat again to get out of here because I cannot climb these stairs. Now, the final button starts off with a cheat into a room where I about lost my mind. This wall of spikes that you see here actually is not a solid wall. If you look at the hitboxes, when I perform a crouch dash, also known as a demo dash, I can fit right in between and actually squeeze through. This is a concept also performed in speedruns to skip multiple rooms at once. So my plan was to demo dash through this wall, regain my dash by taking the crystal and then landing on the other side of the wall. I tried this for a while, got a couple of good attempts but even after all that it just turned out to be impossible. Just to show you the efforts that I took to minimize how many blocks I had to place. I arrive at the final button, clean everything up, get to the key and enter more torture. A very long room that starts off impossible, where in the end I'm trying out another crazy difficult demo dash through this wall, only to once again realize that it is not gonna help me. After some more parkour, and also about 5 cheats and 40 minutes later, we're at the final part of chapter 3, the chase. Here I quickly realized that we can avoid cheating pretty easily by just jumping on his head to give us some height, and most importantly also reset our dash. Now I make it sound easy here this final room still took over half an hour. It started with probably the longest wave dash that you can possibly perform into bumping his head three times in a row to get over these pillars. Uh, oh wait, there, there's more pillars and more head bumps and more suffering, but hey, I'll take it. Also, if you are enjoying this video so far, consider bumping that like button. And if you're new here and enjoy this type of content, you could also bump the subscribe button for more. Anyway, we are finishing up Resort in a whopping 2 hours 24 minutes, and I kid you not, exactly 1000 deaths. It is time for the chapter that I am least looking forward to, and that is number 4. Well, besides starting off with a cheat, there is the f***ing wind. This first part I was messing around a bit and apparently you can keep your dash if you use it in the water. So I was able to fly up and climb up this wall using the height to move on to the next screen. Now talking about this next screen I spent nearly half an hour here already even with a cheat. Originally I also placed a second block here but once I realized it was possible with just one you just know that I had to grind it out of course. This truly got me scared for the rest of this chapter but turns out that Ridge has a lot of aerial rooms with bubbles, a lot of floating platforms and clouds. Also building height using the screen transition was a big help here. We had more parkour and more cheats. This chapter also has moving blocks that make a bunch of these rooms very doable since, well, they make the floor not really an issue anymore. About two cheats later and two moving block rooms later, we have arrived at a beauty. There's a very strong wind here but it is not permanent and that allowed me to climb to the top of this wall using mostly new neutral jumps that don't use up my stamina. Then I jump completely over the first obstacle, reset my dash and stamina and utilize the winds to get into the next screen. 
Some of these lost rooms also have snowballs that just like before we can jump on and it will give us some height and reset our dash. I sadly had to use 3 more extra blocks but then the final long stretch somehow is actually doable. Flying into this room with good momentum into a quick reverse extended hyper and we are done with chapter 4. 1 hour and almost 27 minutes with a modest 761 deaths. Honestly, could have been a lot worse. Chapter 5, the mirror temple, I just... I mean, what do you want from me? The first room already cost me 3 blocks and 15 minutes, but luckily things got a lot more doable and possible. Performing some skips to make this all easier myself. Again, the level kind of broke with all the spikes turning blue, but I mean, it shouldn't be an issue. One thing that truly annoyed me though in chapter 5 is that just like the first small corridor, there's more of those. And sadly, just nothing that I can really do besides performing some precise corner and wall jumps to minimize the amount of cheating that I have to do. I really took my sweet time strategizing the best spots for these blocks. And I'm gonna be honest, the rest of this temple wasn't too interesting either for this challenge. There were very little plays that I could make and a lot of force blocks that I had to place. There wasn't even that much parkour. But we made it to the big mirror regardless, get sucked into the second half and the harder half of this challenge. Chapter. Now, I do say harder, but most of the floor was actually already covered in spikes or tentacles anyway. Not that I didn't have to cheat anymore, however these monsters also helped a bit since I can jump on their heads to reset my dash. Meaning that I didn't actually have to use any cheats in rooms that appear to be very difficult. I mean they're still very difficult of course, but just not completely impossible. Eventually I got to perform a sick skip again so I can avoid some impossible rooms, bumping more monsters, a lot more monsters, and then complete despair. At this part in chapter 5 we found our buddy Theo in a crystal and are supposed to carry him through multiple difficult rooms. Turns out that this is completely stupid when the floor is lava, since I have to throw him around and pick him up from the floor multiple times. Basically every single room here was super impossible unless I cheated on every single jump that I had to make. So instead of adding like a hundred extra blocks to the counter and not even making these rooms an interesting challenge at all, I decided to skip this final part of chapter 5 and call it the day. I truly hate to do this, but I think it's the only way to keep this challenge interesting. In the end, this took me about 1 hour, 18 minutes and 703 deaths. Chapter 6 is one of my favorites. Not just because it starts out with feathers and floating blocks so there's no lava. No, no. We also have Kevins that lift us off the ground. I still had to cheat sometimes, but most of these rooms turned out very manageable. Here are two tricky corner jumps that I probably spent way too long on. More Fetter and Kevin rooms, more corner jumps, and that sums up most of these rooms. This chapter also introduces bumpers, but because I use lava in these maps, it has the funny side effect that it also turned bumpers into the fire versions that will kill you. While this isn't technically part of the Floor is Lava challenge, I tried to avoid using bumpers as much as possible, but when they were actually necessary, I placed two levers. One to switch them back to the normal side, which disables the lava, and then another one to flip the lava back back on. It's pretty wonky, but it works. Also, check out this cool reverse wave dash trick into a precise corner. Yeah. Another big part of chapter 6 is the battle and fights. To get there though, I have this hellish room that's just floor, where I obviously did have to use some cheats, but I was able to minimize it pretty well I feel like. There's a bunch of falling that I have to do, and I'm, I'm definitely not complaining here. And hey look, it's our favorite kind of room again. Hmm. Can, can we just move along? Then the exciting fights. I really enjoyed this part because during the battle there's platforms that drop from the ceiling and they're not part of the ground and therefore not lava so there was minimal cheating to be done and some sick parkour. Let me show you the room I was stuck on the longest to give you somewhat of a feeling of how most of these fights went. This one had to start out with an extra block but after your first hit I discovered you can immediately dash up here then wave dash off the platform and just barely get another hit. In. Then there is another falling block you can dash towards into a very spicy wave dash, another cheat and then the final hit. Then absorb the battle in and get my double dash. You'd expect the double dash to make things easier here but I still spent quite a bit of time figuring out the ending. It took me a bunch of attempts to get this precise maximum range jump to then still have to cheat one final time. This truly was a roller coaster of a level from easy fetters and cavern rooms, a bunch of cool parkour during the battle and fights, to a lot of stupid blocks that I could not avoid. I finished in 2 hours 20 minutes and 780 deaths. 
let's head into the final chapter, the summit. This first room is stupid, just dumb, but the next couple rooms make up for it. Lots of aerial stuff and dash management. Now, the summit consists of multiple parts. This was the first one which was surprisingly doable. The second part is a harder recreation of chapter 1, filled with loads of spikes, meaning that lava isn't that big of a deal except over here, which is another really stupid place to have to use a block. The rest is just a breeze, and onto the next part, a recreation of chapter 2. Again, incredibly straightforward. Spikes and cosmic blocks mean that there's little floor that I have to stand on, and I get through this part with zero cheats. Now, however, we are entering the next part, and if we think back on chapter 3, there were loads of sad rooms where I had to place blocks. This time, though, we have this second dash that happens to make our life a whole lot easier. Does not mean that we didn't have to cheat, but, I mean, it was a lot less than I expected. This room, though, I'm pretty proud of. I fly into it, just barely squeeze through with our first dash, perform a maximum wall bounce into a crystal to regain both dashes and then cleanly make it to the platform. Next up is some good old parkour where the main objective is keeping my stamina until the end. So neutral wall jumps will come in handy again. With this stupid part out of the way, it's time for the next one. King wind. It starts off reasonable with bubbles and clouds, but of course there's the occasional hellish wind rooms that require some extra blocks. I'm gonna be honest, it could have been a lot worse since there's a bunch of aerial ports again where precise maneuvering is all that it takes. The next part is the mirror temple that probably was the worst experience out of any chapter, but believe it or not, I only needed one extra block. Most of the rooms relied on the moving platforms and again, some precise tricks, but it turns out that harder rooms in the normal game often make them easier for this challenge. Since they are covered with spikes or performed in the air, well, just giving your floor to stand on would be a lot easier, but not when the floor is lava. After this part, it is just a matter of climbing the summit now. Theoretically, a lot of it is going to be wall, which should not get affected by lava, but what will get affected by the lava or checkpoints. Some of them I just could not collect since there was no way to stop there. And the climb started out simple, but sadly on checkpoint 21 I had to place my first cheat, followed up by 17 and then 14. But my theory proved right, a lot of the mountain didn't actually change. I'm still just dodging spikes, climbing vertical walls and collecting the occasional checkpoint along the way. I was making very good progress until I saw checkpoint 7, which is just a floor of lava in between a bunch of spikes intended as a resting spot. But to be completely honest, I thought I'd have to cheat way more in the final parts of the game. I was able to cruise a bit, and it wasn't until checkpoint 4 that I again got stunlocked. Then I optimized a feather so I got enough distance to be able to keep my dash and skip checkpoint 3. I got lucky with checkpoint 2 being a floating island, and now there's one more to go. Yep we are getting screwed again. And this stretch to the summit wasn't going to get much easier, but I was definitely going to try my damn best. I had to start off with an extra block, then perform neutrals on this wall to keep my stamina, some precise dashes to grab onto these corners to another extra block, we wave dash onto another one, more neutrals, very precise wall climbs, and then the final part, which is more brutal wall climbs to then eventually reach the peak. 2 hours, 2 minutes and 854 deaths for Summit. This was the total time and the total deaths that I spent on this challenge. I'm a bit disappointed with how many times we had to cheat though, but hey, what do you expect when I turn the floor of an already difficult platformer into lava? I am happy with the effort that I put in to reduce this number as much as possible. I spent way more time on this video than I probably should have, and if you enjoy the content that I make and the effort that I put into these, I have started a Patreon where you could help support what I am doing so I get to keep going. Some of the perks include the director's cut where I provide more context, behind the scenes extra lore, and other info about the videos that I make. And another perk could have your name name pop up on the screen right now, right here. This could be you. And if you enjoyed this particular video, I'm pretty sure that you might like this other Celeste one as well. Or maybe another fun challenge that I did in Jump King. Thank you for watching.